Welcome everyone, this is Pauline Needles, and you're listening to Locho Players News, where we take a look at Blaze Susan Locho and here at Locho Players. And this week we have with us Terry Adwin. Hi hi. Sans Winda. Hello. Calabathian. Man, I was cutting it close this time. No kidding. <laughs> and Krister. Hello. Hello everyone. And it looks like that. We will begin with a little patch that we had this week, update 32.0.1, where they added a new raid, the Hidden Horde of Abnankara, and this was right now available for Tier 1 and Tier 2 difficulties, and the raid opened up on Thursday. And there were three boss encounters in there. I don't know the details of it, but it looks like the third boss is Remo. Like anyone is surprised about that, I guess. Oh, so this confirmed that she's the third boss? Yeah. Okay. And leading the charge deed is available to earn until 3 a.m. on Eastern on April 21st, 2022. And also other notes, classes, the Brawler Critical Chance Increased Trait trait Tooltip now describes its Tier 5 bonus properly. In housing, Erebor neighborhoods that had TBD names now have their appropriate names. Using a token of hope will no longer prevent knockback effects. In quests and adventure areas, legendary item rewards for epic quests in the levels 50 to 105 range have been improved. That's good. And as for UI, in the legendary items reward track can now be accessed in-game with the default hotkey Shift-I. The legendary items reward track now properly functions while mounted. And the legendary item reward track now has a requirement to earn it to earn it of being the, at least level 45, not being a monster player, and have the seeker of deep places trait. Which I guess are logical ones to have. And as for miscellaneous, some French and German text has been updated. I sometimes think that's a permanent fixture on these notes. Huh. Now, with all that said, there is a known issue with the raid. And that is that we are currently working to correct an issue that can cause Remo Frostheart encounter to not reset properly if you are defeated after entering the mind of the Frostheart. This will be corrected in the near future, and we apologize for this inconvenience. But we'll have to hope that they get that fixed soon. Now, they have announced that there is expected to be a patch next week, and I will presume that fixing this known issue is one of the primary movers for this. That would, that would at least will be my guess. Now, there was also a Borrower update this week for Borrower update for 32.0.2 beta number one. And in this, they were testing tier three for the Hidden Horde. And in addition to this, they have other things that they have noted in here. For the Hidden Horde, they corrected an issue Whereas we're not despawning following the defeat of Thrall Lord um, Dushal Mook, the Hidden Horde, they correct an issue of Hobgoblin Totems who would mysteriously go invisible during combat. And they ha- don't have Free Will ready for the Tier 3 testing yet. Probably because they want to make sure they fix the issues they already have with her on Tier 1 and 2, I guess. Totems that mysteriously go invisible during combat are called stealth fighters. <laughs> <laughs> stealth totems. All right. And uh, 
There are some adjustments to the raid. Seal trace read boxes from the rewards track can now be opened from level 45 plus. Adjusted landing point for Erebor housing crafting interior to prevent issues where players could fall through the floor. Stuck spot on Nine Worm Horde Bridge and now has been fixed. Z fighting spots in these grave have been fixed. The Hive Moor Stable Master no longer appears in the further adventures of Bilbo Baggins. Adjusted placement of some ambient music volumes in the houses in Belfalis and adjusted properties for ambient music for the Bohaus Kin Islands and Rohan Mead House. Now, I presume that some of these items that appeared in this beta are actually slated for next week's patch, while the... And some of the other items are not. I'm, for example, I don't think that the raid up the tier 3 thing is scheduled for next week, but I think some of these patch items of doing tweaks in there are. At least that would be my guess. Guess we'll find out next week when I read the release notes. So so is the, the housing area one uh, issues where players could fall through the floor? Is that the one that we came into contact with on girls? Probably. Wasn't that was it a still... lack of contact, Calabathia? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was kind of the lack of contact. Well, for them, I, I, that's the the one good thing about you know always being slow is that you're at the back, and so when literally all three people in front of you are suddenly going pew 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 into nothing on what is a bridge, you tend to stop in time and go, wait a minute, <laughs> <laughs> but you totally get to watch them just kind of like little lemmings, just like wee. Well, and I somehow managed to jump over the hole, and I still don't know how. Because I couldn't see it. <laughs> mm. Let's then head over to the Lotro Beacon for issue 238. Where in the community spotlight? The Better Biscuit Bureau is hosting a second server wide chicken run this Sunday on Treebeard. That was tomorrow from the time of recording. You get the details of that over on the Lotro forums. That is a great name. Oh, chicken and biscuits? Oh. No, the Better Biscuit Bureau. <laughs> the Brylex. Okay. The Brylex is a Locho player from Spain who streams the game every day in the Spanish language, and you check out his channel on Twitch. That's quite a consistent streamer of doing it every day. So let's head out to a weekly comment. What angle is the best angle? The right Good angle. angle. Uh, Wait, what right. Yeah. Which one did you say, Calabathian? A cute angle. Because okay. it's cute. Oh, it's right. a cute we angle. Have cute, we have <laughs> a cute, all right, we have an acute angle and we have a right <laughs> angle. Sense window, do you have a idea on How this? How about an obtuse angle? That's a bit obtuse, but <laughs> right. An equ equilateral, maybe. That's an equilateral triangle, but um. Well, okay, that that give you. What Christer, other angles you, are there? Christer, do you have any idea? Uh, I'm thinking this. It, I, I'm trying to make a fish reference, but it, it's failing me. Because <laughs> I don't do fishing in the game, so. Oh, so so you mean one? I was going to say one of the angles that found in England. The English angle. <laughs> the angle land. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to say, I had to um, decide the best angle based on the angle that a war steed has to take to try to round a corner. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you, oh. you would win an obtuse angle for that, yes. <laughs> Give me 40 acres and I'll turn this war steed around. <laughs> <laughs> the best angle is when you hit, your heavy war steed hits that mod just right with the trample. And it goes flying far away in the air. And oh, then you hit it again. 
And it's even better if somebody like manages to hit it with lightning strike or something while it's in the air. That looks yes. epic. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Let's turn to our fan site news. Loto Players News, last week we whatevered. And Fiber Jedi got Jai get a Jedi's guide to the angle of Nathasel has been updated. You can get an overview, walkthrough, and more over on the blog. Laurel and Larian has created a great looking panoramic image of the angle of Nathasel. You can see it on Twitter. I'm starting to feel like this might have been the answer to that question. What? The angle of Miss Aethel? The best angle. Yeah, the best angle must be Mithrothethabra. (laughs) (laughs) Deca Dumalu has reward images from the Gunabad Reputation Bardware, and you can see these items over at the Deca Dumalu blog. Clearly delicious, makes pretzels and sausages, and get the Loto recipe in real life over in her cooking blog. I wonder if those pretzels can be wielded as swords. <laughs> I strongly doubt that. Now that her made... name is clearly delicious. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Probably not as likely as my dwarf. To make now it a I have these that images. Has to be as a sword instead of eaten. Y'all, I, I just had these these thoughts of you know like, well, what about sausages? And I was like, maybe like the sausage links. And then I was like, do we have whips? We can have like a sausage link whip, um, as a weapon, um, you know, cosmetically. No. Then and and no. that. <laughs> just wait, 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 Calabathia, the cat of nine Smokies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Also, that then led my brain to go, oh, yeah, wait, that fiery whip that uh, the Balrog wields is actually Just a no. Bi- oh, barbecued. <laughs> oh, yeah. That could be it's a great gimmick. Sriracha! <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> barbecued whip. <laughs> Lotro Stream is your first stop to find Lotro on Twitch. This week, the Tolkien Professor gets scholarly. Red Baron checks out the new. And Shoreless Skies goes to Bear Country. Also on Twitch, Queen Perwithian welcomes the ankle. Steely Dead 2021 runs a family stream. And Bloodborne has Raging Blades. And over on YouTube. Cream for Drew's- that, you know. Over on YouTube, Druid's Fire <laughs> decorates a geode house. Cheshire Cat 2 conducts a French language stream and Canadian Gaming Corner checks out the game. And over on the screenshot of the week, the Hobbitry in Arms kinship prepares for some upcoming chicken runs the only way they know how in this week's screenshot of the week. Thanks to the kin for sending this in. Mail your screenshots for consideration by sending it in to Lotro at SandstoneGames.com. And it looks like they are mourning the death of a chicken, it looks like, before mm-hmm. eating it, I guess. I would say they were going, thank you for this bounty, as they're about to dig <laughs> into this delicious chicken. Except they're all wearing chicken masks. So it makes it look like they're mourning one of their fellows who didn't make it on the chicken run. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was the Calabathian straggler that got pounced by a lynx. Yep. <laughs> After watching everybody fall through the floor. (laughs) And that concludes the Lotro Beacon for this week. So let's go over to the store sales. What's on sale this week? Well, uh, the weekly coupon gets us a free fall injury immunity item times five with the coupon code SUREFOOTED now through March 3rd, and also through March 3rd, you get 20% off select housing decorations, select housing sets, housing property writs, and select cloaks. Pretty writs. Let's then head into our weekend gaming, and Kilabathian, what were you up to? 
I went swimming with little hairy women. What? Uh, we were on our, um, uh, well, I don't guess they were little hairy women, but um, we went swimming on, uh, well, one of them was, uh, on our dwarf characters. Uh, we went to the new housing area and it's gold pools. Um, and, and we were just kind of poking around, exploring, and um, apparently finding holes in bridges. Uh, but yeah, very fun. Um, finding holes cassowary, in bridges? Yeah. Cassowary is now level cap 140. Um, he is my first character ever to reach it. Yay! Oh, grats. grats. Yeah. Yeah, I hit that 140 and went, yes, I'm not that squishy now. Um, now I just, since he's Valar, I have to actually go back and pick up, like, deeds and stuff to kind of fill in some of those gaps. Um, ah. But, um, Kelevorn has his new allies now, sort of. Um, thanks to Gorindus for her help figuring out what a, a blue line hunter might need for maximum dan damage and uh, minimum squish. Um, because, yeah, there there was some squish going on. <laughs> we were we were doing instances and found out how squishy it could be. Um, so yeah, Krister, how about you? How was your week? Uh, well, on Thursday, we managed to put together an expedition into the hidden horde of Abdan Kara, and uh, it went... Just in tight. Thank you. <laughs> it went phenomenally well. Um, we had uh, a person who had done two runs prior, and so they had some really good advice on the bosses. And then we experienced, unfortunately... Uh, the uh, glitch that they were talking about, um, where we phased into the final boss, and then we all we all instantly died all at once, and then we respawned uh, outside of the the phased po portion with the gates up, and so we can progress past that. However, uh, it was the first time really where we knew it had glitched and it, it was over effectively, but. Uh, we were all in a great mood, and it, 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 up to that point, it went really well. The drops uh, were awesome. Um, got some really nice essences and got a really nice piece of jewelry there, so definitely motivation to go back. Um, in fact, uh, after the podcast, um, the uh, I, I don't know how many people we've got, but uh, we were thinking of seeing if any of you guys were interested and maybe wanting to go and check that out, that raid out on a T1 tonight. So if you are, after the podcast, let me know. Okay, that sounds like something I would... Uh, we'll see if I could survive getting to the first boss. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Looney's uh, playing with us tonight, too, so... Uh, okay. Oh, um, cool. So if you guys are interested, uh, we can talk about that. And then uh, ESO, uh, I'm just um, running around like a madman, and now I've focused on a couple armor sets after looking at all the stuff, uh, doing all the uh, crafting about uh, specific uh, effects I want. So now I've got the one where I do a, a uh, shock explosion and everybody I hit in, in the, uh, the blast I get healing from. And that's a really nice one. And then the other one I want to get is this uh, one from the Clockwork City where it's a, uh, I think it's one, of, it just creates one of the uh, automatons and then it runs forward and uh, to your target, and it knocks everybody uh, uh, around uh, that's in in, the, in between you, and then shocks them all. Uh, so I'm just looking to totally lightning my orc, and it's going really well so far. So I'm having a blast. And then uh, what was cool was I finished uh, the uh, Caldwell's uh, silver, um, and then when it rolled over to the gold, my chaos crazy start where I just randomly did everything. Um, really paid off because, because I completed the majority of it. I'd only had three items left to do, so I did those and got uh, the gold as well. So now I got the uh, the fancy uh, hat, and uh, that was a lot of fun. I give up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm uh, I'm right behind. You. It's basically like where's Cord. He's right behind you. <laughs> I logged in earlier. He was he was three points behind me. 
And then in Civ Six, I've been trying. I used I was very static uh, in my gameplay in Civ Six. So as I've been re interested in it, I've been playing a bunch of uh, leaders that I haven't played before, and I've really come to like the Ottomans uh, through doing this. And I was just curious with you guys to play Civ Six. Do you guys have any favorite uh, leaders that you like playing quite a bit? Mine, mine were always either Theodore Roosevelt or uh, Caesar. I usually just played those two. If you like the Ottomans, you'll love the Lazy Boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, if you're talking about the Romans, it's not Caesar. It's Trajan. I'm sorry, Trajan. You're absolutely correct. Yes. Because Romans are my go-to. Yes. Yeah, that's Harry my favorite. I don't know who's doing PM. Yes. Yeah, that's my because I like the empire building aspect with them. It feels very easy to well. It like I like that all of your cities are automatically connected by roads. Yep. Hammurabi is a lot of fun if you're playing in a group. Okay. I haven't tried it much without the group, but with the group, it's pretty awesome. I'm guessing it would be without too, but yeah, they had a. I remember a long time ago before they made a change. It was. Um, it was the Native American leader who had like a, you could you like got an extra bonus every time you uh, raided a, a village, um, and it was like you could get incredibly advanced with uh, with him right off the bat. Basically, you could discover a bunch of stuff and advance down the tech tree a bit quicker than anybody else, and then they nerfed it. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, that was my week. Sans, what were you up to? Well. This week, I started off the week swimming in gold. It was amazing. Incredible. Uh, Gorinda's had the awesome suggestion that we take the dwarves to the housing neighborhood, the new one. And I think there might be a slight magnetic pull to the gold. Because it was really hard <laughs> to stay out of it. Um, <laughs> and I've discovered a few new features that Lotro needs. So first, they need a safe jump into gold. So, like, you can jump into gold from a height and survive. And they need, like, a waterfall feature of gold that you can swim up. Um, kind of like you can swim up water in Minecraft. I think we need this feature. But things you can currently do in gold. You can swim. You can backflip. You can tread water-ish. Tread gold. Uh... You can side stroke through it. It's pretty epic. And they've done a really good job. So like if you jump into it, it like sprays up local coins all around you. It is really cool. And in the crafting area, they have a gold hot tub. Um <laughs> gold hot tub. Yeah. Like you can get in it and there's like little areas that are higher than others. Like maybe there's seating or something there. Um, yeah, it's basically a little gold hot tub, and I think they should sell these as housing items so that we can all have our own golden hot tub. Um, and then I discovered that there's a house in the neighborhood that has its very own gold pools. So, um, I went into Dwarven Real Estate. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. And it's still awesome every time I log in. And I skirmished with Pineleaf on Tuesday night, and our summon Terry and Kelbathian spell fell, failed, but it was fun, and we won. And I continued leveling up Amalora on Wednesday night with Maven and Natesh, and I think she's all the way to 139 now, so that's pretty good. So, Terry, how was your week? Um... Well, uh, missions, missions, and more missions. I, <laughs> except I skipped a couple of days, um, cause I needed to sleep. I was really tired. And so I, to make up for it, I ran a couple out of a Nat Corfu, um, which I haven't done in really a long time. And turns out they're a lot harder than I remember them being. <laughs> They're def they're a lot harder than the ones out of Gundabad, I can tell you that right now. I almost died a couple of times um doing some of the 
the same crazy crap that I normally do. Um, I was very surprised. And thanks to Fineor, I also got Sans the best pet ever. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Thank I, you for I, that. Um, the game tried to protect me, though. There was a little bit of a glitch. And <laughs> when I tried to log in, it kept crashing me to desktop. And I finally got in and I figured out why. It's yeah. because <laughs> this item was mysteriously transformed into a crystal spider t- summoning at home. So, um, but thank you very very much for thinking of me and if it ever gets fixed to a crystal muma it will be glorious again (laughs) (laughs) oh well Uh, well that's okay because he sent me a second one so I also have one I named it Cuddles just for you Sans Mm. (laughs) Cuddles is a beautiful crystal spider I gotta tell ya yeah that's Um, what he is I noticed it by Warden on Crick Hollow ha- barely has a hundred of those. I went, should I? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then yesterday I dusted off Well Dressed Killing Machine. Spent way too long playing with allies, considering, although less time than I would have had it been a class that I don't know. Um, because fortunately I kept a record of everything that went on Terry's allies. So it was easy enough to slot things, but they still haven't really fixed the enhancement runes to make them easy to use. So I spent way too long dragging enhancement runes over so that I could up the levels on the traceries. Um, can we fix that, please? Pretty please? Um, actually, while we're on the thing subject of things that could really use fixing, uh, the reward track, I'm st- I'm not in love with it, but I'll tell you what makes me really hate it is when I know that I've just unlocked level like 40, but I open it up and it's giving me level one. <laughs> and I have to try and scroll to the side to find the thing that I just need to claim. Um, yes, so that like is annoying. <laughs> some kind of thing to where it, it like takes you up to your most recently earned level or something like that would be awesome. Cause trying to, or or at least making it scroll up and down instead of sideways. I hate scrolling sideways. I can't even tell you how much I hate scrolling sideways. Because you can't scroll that way with the mouse button. Um. <laughs> and then we skirmished very irresponsibly <laughs> with the Friday group. <laughs> because there were only four of us. But we had already determined that the most effective way to level people was with skirmishes. So we we four man some six man skirmishes. It was less irresponsible because um, I ran them at my level, and Pine Leaf was just a level below me, and we had two people that were above us. So it kind of sort of balanced out, except it didn't really balance out because our healing rune keeper kept forgetting to pay actually pay attention to people's health and do healing. <laughs> so <laughs> everybody died at least once. Um, did you finally wind up dying? Yes, I did. Okay. Because because remember I was joking about it because Yes, you you you, you because said we got, I into, we got into the second skirmish cuz the first skirmish I was the only one who didn't die. And then we get into the second skirmish and our rune keeper goes, "Hey, I finally figured out where do not fall is. Let me put that on you." And he puts it on me. I'm like, "Oh sure, you put that on the one person who hasn't already died. Now watch me die." And I did. <laughs> <laughs> Before, uh, well, and the rune keeper had died too and was like running back, but fortunately, um, do not fall kicks in because the rune keeper had, had retreated. So I ended up running back from the beginning anyway, <laughs> but it didn't actually count as a death for me marks wise because of do not fall. So that was nice. Um, and then I'm still hating on Malibal Tor in ESO. I hate it so much. I hate the zone uh attended the wedding of the the two people in uh the green lady and the yes Sylvanar. the green lady and the silver and I spent the whole instance tapping my foot going when is it over can we leave now <laughs> i spent the entire time in the zone getting these two people together and all i want is to just leave 
Um, I am so sick of werewolves right now. <laughs> That's all I fought for the last three areas is werewolves. Um, and by, by the way, as, as a PC werewolf, you, you devour corpses. Let me tell you something. The NPC werewolves do that too. Because if you're fighting two werewolves and you kill one of them, the other one will immediately eat its buddy. <laughs> yeah, that is annoying. And heal himself! So, yeah. Um, also, I'm really hating the PvP event that's going on right now because most of the endeavors, endeavors right now are um, <laughs> PvP related and I want nothing to do with PvP so I'm missing out on a lot of endeavors right now. I'm, and Yeah, so... I, I know, I've been noticing the same thing. <laughs> it's like, um... <laughs> Uh, well, the weekly endeavors are, let's see, siege weapons, group stuff, group stuff. Uh, I'm not doing any of that. Yeah. yeah, I skipped the weekly this week. Same reason you did. <laughs> <laughs> but today it had crafting stuff, so it was, actually it was uh, harvest, some, harvest logs. So I broke out a woodworking survey and went, survey and took a break from Malibu's to go to Alicare, which I like a lot better. Um, and I'm still saving up for purchasing one of the higher level, you know, the uppity houses. I'm up to 350,000 gold in the bank. Yay! Wow. I'm almost a third of the way to half of one of those houses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, it's a $2 million house? I don't even remember. I think the last one that I looked at that I really wanted was, yeah, two million. Ooh, um, a couple of them have been one million, but it's just it's so irritating. Um, cause well, and I'm also crafting my own furniture and storing that in the bank too. Um, cause a couple of days ago we had a place five furnishings event, so I went to one of my empty houses and put stuff in it. You know, because I bought all, I got all the in rooms and left. Most of them are still empty. Right. Um, but I'm stocking up on stuff that will eventually go into the uh, the new house whenever I buy the new house. I don't even know where I'm, which new house I'm going to buy. I just know that I'm going to get one because I want something bigger than an in room. <laughs> and and other than the one that you have in the. And and yes, bigger than the one that I bought in the Rift, because the one that I bought in the Rift is, is bigger than in a room, but it's still just a single room thing. I want a multi-level, multi-room house. Oh, okay, house, which is why the Antiquities place doesn't count. Yeah, no, the well, the Enchanted Snow Globe doesn't count because I bought no, that I, already. I, no, the Antiquities place, the 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 one in Western Skyrim. What Antiquities place? Well, or well, apparently I have a house that I think I got when I, I assume I got it when I bought Western Skyrim. That was the, it was a freebie house that I have in there. I don't think so, because I don't have a house. Huge. Okay. I wonder how I got it then. Mm. I don't know, but if you can get it for free, I would love to know how. Uh, um, it it, it might have been collector's edition or something like that. In which case, it's a little bit oh, could be. more expensive than free. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, yes, that was my week. So, finally, how about you? All right, I'll begin with my low level warden, where I was continuing my explorations in the angle. Then, for the field trip, I learned that my burglar was using wooden daggers as the legendary item I had on my burglar. Why did I attempted to go into Strike against Danninglor, and I had old style allies. I was level one nineteen, and I was, I just wasn't hurting anything, so I was pretty much ripped apart on. So that's why I, so I left the skirmish and joined up with Terry and Sans. We got me up to one twenty in those two skirmishes that we were just discussing earlier during Terry's section. And now three. today, you three skirmishes. Oh, three skirmishes, right? So it got me up to 120. So today, I ran some missions, and these were the slowest missions. 
ever <laughs> run because I still had those butter knives because I was 120 and I didn't want to go and get all new allies and spend all that effort into it and then go to 121 and and have a very very bur- and have very big trouble trying to get to the next level. So I decided to do that. So I managed to get to 121 finally. So I did all my appraisals for my items in there. I put in all my stuff for my legendary item. After doing that, I went into Dan and Glore and I was Cuisinarting the enemy now. So yes, so yes, my weapons were horrific in there. I my defenses- honestly had to think a minute there, um, Pine, because you said you had butter knives, and I'm like, cosmetically equipped. Can no, you actually I, do that? I actually no, thought you, you were meant real butter you knives. You can actually because um, butter knives <clears throat> are a cosmetic item. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm gonna I, have to I, put I, I butter knives on the Hobbit somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I was spe- I was speaking figuratively <laughs> though, not literally though. Yeah. Yeah, whatever is the case there, I I did learn though that my armor though needed a little bit of help because there was one counterattack where that was very very brutal in there that did knock me down. So I need a little work on that. So I looked at that. I opened up three three pieces of Madam armor. Now one of them was gold. The other two were science. So they were high-end Madam Armor in there. And they were major upgrades to what I had, meaning at least doubled my armor and amount of agility, armor and agility bonuses that were being offered by that item. So we're talking major, major upgrades to the armor for those three pieces in there. So I'm hoping that will help my defenses a little bit. And just as we're going to the show, starting the show, I was wondering, did I check my virtues on this character? Because this is a character I had not logged into a long or a long time <laughs> before we did this. And I'm wondering, did I check my virtues to see if I actually have any on this character? <laughs> so that's probably was something no, I wasn't it? <laughs> no, because I haven't logged into the character since <laughs> I asked myself this question. So I'm probably going to check those also, and maybe I get my defenses up so that I can actually survive a counterattack that involves a Forestborn Reaver next time. But I think I'm getting better there, and at least I'm able to damage the enemy now, which is a step in the right direction. It feels so good, doesn't it, when you can finally <laughs> damage an enemy? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I know that from personal experience with Cass. <laughs> I'm doing yeah. damage, yay! <laughs> All right. Then in ESO, I started my quest for Caswell's Gold by completing the Stonefall's main quest line today. And that concludes my week in gaming. Our top supporter this month is LotroBuild.com. LotroBuild.com is a collection of full Lotro databases that includes an items database, a relics database, and a titles database. You could use it right from your Discord server with Lotro Build Bot. We currently have 15 supporters on Patreon, and if you'd like to join this illustrious raid of players and help support Lotro players, you can go to the Nature's page you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. Your money would be used for podcast hosting, website hosting, and to pay for our live shows. If you would like to send us an email, you can send it to podcast at lotroplayers.com. You can also also to also Twitter, or the Players Alliance at Players Ally, Locho Players at Locho Players, Arendis at Arendis, Pine Fit, Pine Leaf Needle, Senswinda at Senswinda, Terry Adwin at Terry Adwin, Guarendis at Guarendis, Calabathian at Calabathian, and Krister is running dailies for CP. Yeah, he's fixing to be running down the street with Terry coming after him in a car. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see you get some champion points when you're in a hospital. When I break both your legs and your arms. <laughs> I'm not competing, though. I'm available. If Terry needs to do hard stuff and needs a crazy uh, hammer swinging orc, I can, I'm there. You know, so. I'm about cooperation. I don't need any of that stuff. I have a bastion. <laughs> I want to start doing some of the dungeons and stuff, so I. Yeah, there is. I do want to start doing some dungeons, but we ne- we would actually need to figure out a night to do that. Yeah. <laughs> the 
Players Alliance has two shows on Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have Lucha Players News and DDO Players News records when Drac is available. That is all for tonight, and this is Polyphony Duels reminding you to skirmish responsibly.